folks, I'm Will Bridges with 123 Trade, and in this video, we're going to do a trading forecast for uh, this week the, to finish out July. We're going to be looking at you know all the major announcements that happen on ForexFactory.com's economic calendar. So if you are wondering what any of these mean or how they might affect your trading, and really what to do with these announcements, maybe figure out what currency pairs you might want to be long or short on. I'm going to talk about it in this video. And if you like this type of content, then by all means, press the thumbs up button. I'll wait. I got to. I'm just kidding. Anyways, thank you for clicking the like button. Subscribe, ring the bell. There's going to be lots of time sensitive information that comes out on this channel. And, you know, by all means, there's a lot of benefits to working with us. You know, this is a risk disclaimer. What this tells you about is if you put your money in the Forex market or any other market, your capital's at risk. And you know, generally, if you're looking for a trading account, you know, we can help you find somebody secure to work with for one and two. We can get up to 400 to one leverage, actually up to 500 to one leverage now. Uh, if you do have any questions about that, you want to know, you know, how to get up to $22,000 in free education and tools from us, then visit our website, 123trade.com, or send us an email to brokers at 123trade.com. Otherwise, let's get down to business. Okay, this is the Forex Factory calendar, and I'll show real quick. This is basically just for this week. You can look at this by, by month, week, day, however you want. Okay, I show this you know, fairly regularly. You can have every announcement that happens or just the ones that are important and you know medium importance. Okay, there's gonna be a lot more of these. These gray ones are holidays. Okay, so I might leave the holidays up there just to know when there's gonna be a lot of spending in whatever country that it is because it's usually what people do on their days off. Um, spend their money. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. So we'll have just the medium and high impact and any holidays that, that might be happening anywhere. But just to look at here, starting off, German IFO business climate. Okay, this number is a, over 100. Okay, we look at the graph here. Okay, this number is recovering. Okay, if you guys can see this here, this is kind of a, uh, you know, a crown formation that's forming on the bottom here. Uh, actually looks pretty positive for where things are going. Things have been a lot worse as far as the German business climate goes. Uh, really just, you know, this is the coronavirus downfall down here. And it looks like we've been on kind of this uptrend since then. So minor pullback, not a big deal. Uh, so I think a strong number for the euro. And I think that there's going to be a lot of strong numbers for the euro in here. Uh, MPC member, uh, Vile speaks. Okay, so basically... He's talking about running out of room for low interest rates. That means that he probably wants to think about raising them so that they have room to lower them later if they need to. Uh, Bank of Japan, this, that would be a bullish signal on the pound. Um, and really, the pound and the euro correlate very heavily. So if one's bullish, the other one's likely to be bullish too. Uh, Bank of Japan, uh, Governor Kuroda speaks. They've been dovish since I was born. Uh, but they don't typically do a good job of devaluing the yen. <laughs> so, uh, really, I would take that announcement with a grain of salt, whatever he says. The uh, Royal Bank of Australia Deputy Governor DeVell speaks. Okay, hard telling what they're going to come out and say. A lot going on in Australia. There's lockdowns happening there right now. Um, and outside of that, you know, Australia is very well propped up, you know, from a manufacturing commodity standpoint. Uh, by doing a lot of business with China. So they, they're going to sell a lot of iron ore, for example, to China, a lot of gold. If the people want to make whatever electronics, a lot of that stuff is going to come from things that are mined in Australia, mined in New Zealand, built in China, sold in USA, you know, or wherever in Europe. Uh, but world goes around. Okay, so USD consumer confidence, it's 123 numbers, pretty high. Okay, so that means that Americans are... You know, spending money. There's no other comparable number to look at in here. This is lower than this previous. Okay, so that is somewhat concerning that it's coming down, uh, mostly because I think inflation is so high here. We can't maintain this constant uptrend of buying more stuff. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, so that is somewhat of a bullish number, though, for the USD. We're going to get a mis mixed bag on that, uh, just so we're on the same page with that. Uh, so I do think the dollar is going to be sideways. A lot of that's just because there's so many announcements coming out and the market's going to wait. Um, but the CPI numbers in Australia, these numbers are very high. So if we look at these here, we pull up our graph. Okay. We've got very, very like bad deflation that happened in July last year. And 
since then we've recovered and these numbers that we're looking at on the recovery side were initially very high we're talking about numbers we haven't seen since 2011 all the way back here so a decade since we've seen this much inflation in australia things are moving there for whatever reason they wanted to i don't know i don't want to talk any smack but they literally shut down you know a whole province because one person died and i and i'm I, i'm not saying that that's you know okay but you know at the end of the day they're uh really sacrificing it all uh for the lockdowns down there and uh there's a ton on the line it's it's hard to understand how all these decisions get made obviously you know i'm not trying to be political in this i'm trying to figure out where the money's going to go but um, australia is poised to have a lot of growth so it is uh, kind of concerning how quickly they just shut that off uh, but obviously i understand people are afraid of their health uh, but cad okay Canada, CPI numbers, okay, this is what's concerning about Canada, okay, you look at their inflation numbers, okay, these numbers here, this trim mean CPI at 2.6%, we look at Canada here, that's some of the numbers, that's the highest numbers we've got to look at, okay, for the last few years, okay, all the way back to 2017 is as far as we can go on the chart that I've got here, but we are way, way, way in the stratosphere with inflation in Canada right now, so, if they don't raise rates, and I don't know that they can because we'll just say debt to income has come up a lot in Canada. And actually, I think I just shared this with, uh, I'll share this with you guys real quick. But basically, you know, debt to GDP, Canada is up top here. Okay, so Canada has gone up over 80% change in debt to GDP from, you know, quarter four of 2019 to Q3 of 2020. So not even, that's not even, it's probably, it could be worse than this if they're continuing any of what they did in the last two years, uh, which I think is happening. So you're talking about, you know, change in debt to GDP. They're doubling their debt to GDP ratio, ratio almost in the last couple of years. So very much bearish activity unless they raise rates. And I don't know if they can raise rates because they may not be able to afford the interest payments if they do that. So they're kind of in a vice right now, if you know what I mean. Uh, but crude oil inventories, this number is going to be important. I think this was up for the first time in several, you know, several announcements here. So that means the inventory for oil is going up. So they've kind of, they've, they've closed that supply gap that existed earlier this year. And, you know, that may continue, maybe not. We don't actually have a forecast for it yet. So if that comes out strong, that may be slightly bullish for the CAD, might be slightly bullish for the dollar. If it comes out, you know, as an increase in inventory, very likely the CAD sees more weakness. Dollar might see more weakness to go along with it. FOMC statement is really what the world's going to be paying the most attention to, though, on Wednesday. Uh, this is the Federal Open Market Committee here in the United States. The Federal Reserve is very likely going to lay out whatever their plans are, as of now, for when they want to raise interest rates. If they change that from two times in, in 2022 to three times or any time this year, then that is something that would be very bull dollar. If they come out and they, don't, they say they're not going to change any of their plans right now with existing inflation levels, that's going to be weakness for the dollar. At least it should be. Obviously, there's no guarantees. Uh, but USD, okay, advanced GDP, this is going to be important. Okay, 8.5%, massive number. Okay, so that's a big GDP number. The reason why it looks so big is because we're spending a lot of money in the government, and that gets counted in gross domestic property, gross domestic products. So if the government decides they want to, you know, spend a billion dollars on something, then that gets factored into GDP and a lot of the reason why we're seeing these crazy high numbers like we're looking at now. Also, New York and California are opening a couple of the biggest economies, well, really in the world that have been mostly shut down or you, know, you could only have half capacity at your restaurant type of you know stuff that's been going on for the last you know year and a half. Uh, but that advanced GDP number, if it comes out this strong, that would be bullish for the dollar. So... All signs point to the fact that they need to raise rates. If they don't raise rates or say that they're going to raise rates, I'd be very surprised because it does seem like they really need to do that. I don't know how else to put it, uh, but if they want to curb this inflation, you know, gas is up somewhere around 50%, at least at the pump for me. It's up an average of $1.25 per gallon in the U.S. You know, they're going to need to raise, inf raise interest rates if they want to curb that inflationary number, but we'll see, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. 
Pending home sales, okay, new home sales is going to be down, mostly because commodity prices are up with all the crazy inflation that's happening. Okay, so if it's more expensive to buy materials for a house, fewer people are going to buy a house. That's straightforward. And the supply of existing homes is also falling, so we may see falling numbers in those purchases because, well, let's just say I bought my house here in Orlando, Florida a year ago, and I think it's probably gone up somewhere in the range of, you know, 20% almost since I bought it. I just got a new offer from whatever, Open Door or whoever, and that has literally gone up $100,000 just since, you know, November of last year when I checked on it. So, there's a ton, ton of, of just asset growth is huge right now. So we should see a lot of strength in things like, you know, gold, silver, you know, oil is on the way down a little bit right now, mostly because the supply gap is being filled. But I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they raise taxes on oil here in the U.S. sometime soon to further drive the price up. Um, otherwise, unemployment claims 375,000 is a lot okay not quite as bad as the tsunami that we've seen over the course of last year this is what that looks like okay but not quite the lower you know this even number down here that we're still kind of double what we used to look at you know we're talking about 222k and that's i don't know 50 percent less than what we're looking at and that was kind of a normal number years in the past uh, at least during uh, the previous administration here in the u.s but german preliminary gdp Okay, this number is a massive increase, okay, 2%. Okay, so this is more strength on the euro, more clear cut what's going on there uh, than anything else. The Europe is seeing some, well, improvement. They're kind of digging themselves out of the basement. Canada, this GDP number is negative. That means they had, well, they didn't have growth. It's the opposite of growth. So that means I'm, I'm pretty weak on the GDP right now, to say the least. Uh, so I, I may be looking for places, you know, maybe the euro CAD's a decent place to start looking for longs. Okay, the... Uh, core PCE price index, this is more inflationary stuff. This number is also high. So the U.S. really looks like they need to raise rates. You know, manufacturing PMI at 63, super strong. No reason <laughs> to think that that's not a good number. It's over well over 50. Revised consumer sentiment, if we look at this, this is 80. This is actually declining. Okay, so that's actually, you know, not great, but you know, not a not the worst thing that could happen. I mean, we're basically coming back and testing some support here. You know, really no reason to believe why this can't recover more. And you know, this is really back in like, well, we're we're living in 2015, 2000, you know, 14 numbers, which we'll just say I lived during that time and nobody was really that concerned. Okay, manufacturing PMI in China, this does seem to like to be a slightly lowering number. Not as bullish as it has been, but anything over 50 is bullish. As long as it stays over 50, there's going to be a ton of action on the uh, Aussie, New Zealand dollar because they're going to be supplying a lot of the commodities that go into building everything that China produces. And they have, let's just say, one of the fastest growing economies on earth every year, and they have for many years. China's going to move. Uh, but that being said, folks, thank you for checking out the video. If you liked what you saw here today, give us a thumbs up. Press the subscribe button. You're going to want to click the bell, too. That way, the good people at Google can send you a message as soon as we post stuff like this. But otherwise, if you haven't already, check out the website. Uh, we've also got the news channel coming out here soon. If you just go to 123trade.com slash news. You can get a sneak peek at it now. And I basically, I built some RSS feeds that do all of the Google searches I used to do every day and puts it all on one page for you. So uh, lots of other tools on our site as well. If you need a trading account, we can help you get up to $22,000 in free stuff just for funding an account through us. But otherwise, thanks for joining again. My name is Will Bridges from 123Trade. Hope you enjoyed our breakdown of the forexfactory.com economic calendar this week. You guys be good. Or be good at it. Happy trading. Take care.